So this is the second part of the video on preparing salts. We've already looked at uh, the definition of a salt and we've looked at the preparation of an insoluble salt using the precipitation method. And in this video we're going to look at preparing a soluble salt using an insoluble base. Now there's going to be an, another preparation on preparing a soluble salt from a soluble base, but in this video we're going to look at an insoluble base. In other words, a base which doesn't dissolve in water. So, for this example, we're going to try to prepare a sample of copper sulphate using copper oxide, which is an insoluble base, and sulfuric acid. Now, hopefully you should spot that we haven't actually uh, balanced uh, that equation uh, Sorry, let's switch on to pen. So if we had CuO and H2SO4, uh, well, copper sulphate is CuSO4, because both species have a valency of 2. Uh, so you can see we've got H2 and O left over, so we're missing water. And that would be H2O. Right, so let's look at how we're going to prepare uh, a sample of copper sulfate crystals. Now when you're describing a method in an exam be very vigilant, be very careful about using the correct equipment and also do your best to describe uh, amounts of substances. Now if we talk about liquids we want to describe volumes and so in this we're going to use sulfuric acid and I've picked 25 centimeter cubed as a reasonable amount of sulfuric acid to use. And we're going to measure that out using a measuring cylinder. So we're then going to put it in a beaker. So the sulfuric acid is in our beaker here and we'll put the beaker on top of a tripod and we're going to warm it gently. So there's the heat uh, from the Bunsen flame. And there we've got sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is a colourless liquid. You don't want to boil it, you only want to warm it, otherwise you'll be um, filling the lab full of sulfuric acid vapours, which is particularly unpleasant. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put in a spatula of copper oxide. Now, copper oxide is a black powder. So when you put the copper oxide in, uh, what you'll see is the black powder it sinks to the bottom, stir it, and it's very important that you stir it, and very important that you mention in your description of the method that, you stir it, that you're stirring it. And what you'll see is the copper sulfate starts to change colour. Uh, sorry, the sulfuric acid starts to change colour because you're forming copper sulfate. Have a think about the colour of copper sulfate. Hopefully you're familiar with it, and hopefully you should remember that it's blue. So you'll start to see a blue solution forming. Now, if you've only added a very little amount of copper oxide, the copper oxide might all disappear because it's reacted with the sulfuric acid. It's not dissolved because we've not formed copper oxide solution. It won't dissolve because it's insoluble. But it's reacted with the sulfuric acid to form copper sulfate and water. Now, we want to ensure that all the sulfuric acid gets reacted. So to do that, we add excess copper oxide. So we add the solid until it stops disappearing. So we put spatula after spatula in there until it stops disappearing. So what we'll be left with is a solution of copper sulphate and some sludgy black copper oxide on the bottom of the beaker. We don't want the excess copper oxide so we will filter it. So here's our filter funnel and we'll put a piece of filter paper in there and the uh, I'm struggling with my drawing here uh, let's just go over that and we'll pour the solution in here the copper oxide sludge will build up on the filter paper in there and the copper sulphate solution will come through. Now it's best, I've drawn a beaker, but it's probably better if you do it straight into an evaporating basin. 
Okay, so an evaporating basin looks, well, in fact, there's a picture of one right down here in the right hand corner, a sort of white porcelain uh, basin. And what you're then going to do is you're going to put this basin again on top of a tripod, okay, and you're going to gently heat it. Okay, so here's the copper sulfate solution in there, and you've got to heat it so about half the water is evaporated. Now what starts to happen is you get crystals forming around the edges and on the surface. And really when those start to form you should stop heating. And then you turn the heat off and you allow the rest of the water to evaporate naturally. You might think, well wouldn't it be quicker just to heat it very strongly and evaporate the water using the Bunsen flame? And yeah, you're right, that would be quicker, but that runs the risk of you overheating it and copper sulphate actually will thermally decompose. It will break down if it's heated too strongly. Um, so you wouldn't be forming copper sulphate in the end if you overheated it. So it's safer just to allow the rest of the water to evaporate naturally. Now, if you're answering a question like this in an exam, be careful, mention your volumes. Um, don't forget to stir, okay? Always make sure that the acid has been warmed, okay? You filter off the unreacted solid and you gently heat the filtrate until half the water has evaporated and then you allow the rest to evaporate naturally. So this is the method which is used for producing soluble salts from insoluble bases. And if we look at a couple of equations for reactions like this, which are often asked in the exam, uh, the first one is the one we've just done. Uh, so copper oxide plus sulfuric acid, we said formed copper sulfate. And water. And if we were writing a simple equation for this, well, we need to know our valencies. Well, valency of oxygen or oxide, well oxygen's in group 6 in the periodic table, so it has a valency of 2, copper also has a valency of 2, so it'll just be CuO, and that's a solid. Sulfuric acid, well, I said in the first video you needed to know the formula of sulfuric acid off the top of your head, uh, it's H2SO4, and it's not pure sulfuric acid, it's been dissolved in water, so it's aqueous, and we make copper sulphate. Uh, copper has a valency of 2. Sulfate also has a valency of 2. You need to learn the valency of sulfate. Um, so it'll be CuSO4 aqueous because the copper sulfate is dissolved in water and then we also make water H2O and water is a liquid. Students occasionally write aqueous for water. Aqueous is only used to describe substances that have been dissolved in water so you wouldn't use it to say water was dissolved in water. Copper carbonate, a lovely green powder, also reacts with acids uh, to produce soluble salts. Uh, in this case, if we're reacting with hydrochloric acid, what salt would it produce? Well, we talked about this in the first video. We said that a salt was an acid which had lost its hydrogen ion, and that hydrogen ion had been replaced with a metal, so if we take away the H and we add the metal, it would be copper chloride. So that's the salt we would produce. And you should remember from the first video that a metal carbonate plus an acid, so a metal carbonate plus an acid gives a salt plus two other substances. Uh, we'd also make carbon dioxide and we would make water. So we could produce the copper chloride using the same method as we did before, except we'd have slightly different observations. When we were adding the solid copper carbonate, you'd be seeing not only a coloured solution of copper chloride forming, but you would also see effervescence in the beaker with the colourless carbon dioxide being emitted. Now, if we were going to write that as a symbol equation, uh, copper and carbonate both have a valency of 2. 
you need to know that carbonate has the valency of 2, so it's CuCO3, and that's a solid. You also need to have learnt the formula of hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, aqueous. Now, copper has a valency of 2, chloride has a valency of 1, so when you swap the valencies over, we have CuCl2, and that's aqueous, because it's dissolved in the water. Uh, we also make CO2, which is a gas, and we make water, which is a liquid. And let's have a quick check just to see if this is balanced. Uh, well, we've got one copper, one copper, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygens, two, three oxygens, one hydrogen, ah, two hydrogens. Okay, so let's put a big two here. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two chlorines, ah, two chlorines. So that's balanced. And that concludes uh, this video for the preparation of a soluble salt using an insoluble base. In the next one, we'll look at preparing a soluble salt from a soluble base.